this is going to be the technical first video of this new channel. Technically I already had four videos up, but I deleted them because they were recorded months ago and put on my other YouTube channel. And so I went into that channel, copied them back to my computer, and then I uploaded them on this channel. But then I decided that I didn't want two videos, two of the same exact videos on separate channels. So I'm just going to do this one new from here on out. So, um, as the title suggests, this is going to be a video on camping gear that I'm going to bring on an upcoming camping trip. It's not really to any special place. Uh, it's just some patch of state forest here in Minnesota. Um, yeah. So, uh, it's a very pine ridden forest. There's very, very few hardwoods out there. Um, there's According to the map, there's one tiny little stream somewhere, but I've never seen it. So water will have to be packed in. It's not included in my gear right now, but it will have to be packed in for cooking and drinking. Um, but without further ado, uh, all my stuff at the moment is packed away in my bag. This is the Tetan... I don't know if this is the Scout or the Explorer. It's the 65 liter bag, I believe. So this is what all my gear is going to be on. Um, kind of do a little rundown on it in a moment. But everything that I'm bringing in is in here except for a few select items that I've been using around the house and everything. Um, like. This winter, a few weeks ago, was kind of brutal, so I was using my schmog as a face mask because I don't actually own a ski mask or anything. Um, this is my Swiss Army knife. I made a lanyard for it with two carabiners, it clips to my belt, as well as my ferro rod. Did the same exact thing with that. Bright yellow, or I'm sorry, bright orange reflective paracord. So if I lose that, I really have an issue. Um, my gloves. These are leather Wells Lamont winter gloves. I believe they're fleece lined. Uh, they're very warm gloves. So I enjoy those. I have a pair of foam insulated gloves in those totes there. That's the rest of my camping gear that I'm not bringing. And those will be more of like my summer gloves. Um, I'll have my belt knife. This is a Gerber Prodigy, and it's the Walmart version, which is the only version of the Gerber Prodigy with a comp Um, I got a new camping watch that I haven't used all too much. Been wearing it at work mainly. It can tell me the temperature, forecast kind of stuff. It says it has a compass, but I don't. I, I won't be trusting that compass. It tells the time, obviously. And then I got my compass. Looks kind of like an old pocket watch. It's been tried and true. It works. So that stays on me. So all that stuff I just listed stays on my person, as well as like the clothes I'm wearing, my jacket, my hat. Pretty sure that's everything that covers my person. So on the bag up here, you can kind of see this orange paracord. I tied this on here because it has. Um, let's see if we can do this. These loops go all the way through to the bottom here, and so right the other way. That's where my axe sits, so I slide it in this top loop of the paracord. Leave your tension. And it nests in there, and that keeps it from sliding too much. So this is my Husqvarna 26 inch 
I came out with it's the chopping axe or the wood cutting axe, if that's what they call it, but I've used it about three or four times, and so far I'm in love with it. It has an amazing bite to it. It's nowhere near the quality of what many folks that what many folks uh, use, like the Grand First Brooks or the whole First Brooks, but definitely a good budget axe. I think I got this for like 80 or 90 bucks from uh, Acme Supply Co. So that's on the outside of my pack. Um, pretty sure that's everything that's on the outside of my pack. Right here in this front main pocket, it's just where I keep my first aid kit. Just that way it's at the ready. Um, this top folds over and it has a zipper up here. And I think the only thing I keep in here is a pair of vice grips for which I'll get into in just a moment as to why I have them. So it's got two cinch straps, or two drawstring straps. Sorry, I'm on frame here. So, first one, second one, and right away on top, I have my camping plate, which I'm not always going to bring this, but the next time me and my buddy go out, I'm going to bring it to test it, and that's where these come into play. Kind of like a hillbilly frying pan. I believe I learned that from uh, Dave Canterbury on YouTube. There is one more thing that would go on the outside of my pack. And that is just a cheapo metal thermos. Single walled. That was silver with a random emblem on it. Or a random uh, logo. Took sandpaper all the way around it to uh, sand it down. I took some heat resistant black paint and painted it so I can boil on it and so it doesn't just look like a big scratched up piece of metal. So this would be on the outside of my pack as well. Next up in the bag will be my cook pot. This I got from selfrelianceoutfitters.com. Um, and this is what I will boil my water, cook my food in, and on my trips, what I'll carry my food in. It's just going to sit right on the inside of here since, I mean, it takes up no more space in the pot. So, that's got the hanger and butterfly handles for easier pouring. So, tried this thing out so far and I love it. Next up, which I haven't decided if I'm going to bring yet, is just my big chunk of rope. Nothing too fancy about it. I think it's about 50 feet. I don't think I've cut any off yet, so it should be 50 feet. Um, all the way against the back is my homemade mewing pad. I made it out of some foam mesh and duct tape. And it's a pocket that carries my grill. And I'm going to be getting a new grill. I believe it's on the way or it's already here. A friend, actually my girlfriend got it for me. And so that's going to be taking the place of that one. Because it's an actual mesh grill. So instead of just having lines running like this, it's got them running this way as well. So less things will slip through. Then the biggest item in my pack is my sleeping pad. This is a Venture Forth sleeping pad. It's a self-inflating sleeping pad. Um, it narrows towards the feet, so it uh, folds up a little bit smaller. Still out of frame here. Sorry about that. I got a better place to do this. Maybe outside when it's not snowing. Oh. And that is it for the main pouch. Okay, well, I take that back, so... Let's put this here. So, the main pouch, uh, when it has two compartments, 
the compartment ends here on the inside with a zippered pouch. If I were to open that, it would go all the way to the bottom. But this bottom section is it's the Explorer 4000. That's what this model is. The bottom compartment runs all the way down to here, and it's... Like, their description says it's the sleeping bag holder. Well, what I'm using it for is my entire sleeping system holder short of the sleeping pad because that thing's just too big to fit in there. So sleeping pad. I'm gonna have to set this down because one of the biggest downsides of this is the zippers are really just on this pouch because there's a cinch strap this green thing is bungee cord and so it pulls against the zippers very much or a lot and it makes it kind of hard to zip and unzip so right away off the top is my DD 3 meter by 3 meter uh, tarp which I'll use for hammock camping or even just natural shelter camping um, inside of a hat I got from survivalboxes.com which is why I'm using this hat because it's a really cheap crappy hat is eight heavy duty tent stakes because I'm only gonna have these with me for winter for summer and everything I'll use the ones that come in there but winter when the ground's frozen still I need something a little bit bigger so I can hit them into the ground because the ones in there are like your standard tent stakes that bend then I have my compact sleeping bag. This thing's rated for, I believe, 50 or 60 degrees. 15 degrees Celsius, which I think is around 60 degrees, is what it said. It's really small, um, compact-wise, and it's pretty narrow, but for me, I'm a small dude, so it works. And I believe, lastly... no, oh, there's two more things. I have my hammock. I got it from Fleet Farm, actually. I think it was like $30 on sale. Plus, since I work there, I have a discount, so I got it for a little bit cheaper. And um, I love this thing so far. It's great. I haven't slept in it, but I've set it up a few times out by the fire. Bag's getting a little bit dirty, but set it up a few times, and I love it so far. And the last thing in my sleeping area, which I'm not really sure why I have in the sleeping area. I'm trying to do this one time. is my stove. So to set this up. It's got four different pieces. So these are front and back, so this is a side. So it just kind of locks into place. Things have to go in there as well. I need the other side. The other side goes over here. So I never said I was smart, folks. Okay, let's send this sides in there, sides in there, and then this one. Oops, that's too high. Slides over the top. My room is very dark. So if you guys are having trouble seeing on the camera, I'm having trouble seeing in real life as well. That and it's a really cheap camera. So that's just my little twig stove. And it came with this little bowl. But the bowl doesn't really fit on top there very nicely. It's still got some wobble to it. So that'd be something that we'd have to fine tune. I don't think it's supposed to go on the inside, so, but, I mean, it's a stand. If you were to do it like that, I don't really know the benefit of that, but 
it's a pretty decent sized twig stove. It's bigger than I thought it would be, which is actually pretty nice because it compacts down really small. So I have this as well. Oh crap, which one can I pick up? This one, maybe? Yes. Okay, so I'll dismantle that once I'm done with this video. So that's everything for the main pouches. Um, now let's just off to the side pouches, which just has a few things in them. So this one should just have three things. It's got my Mora Cans Ball, which is my thinner, more delicate task knife. Uh, it's the knife I'll feather with mostly. I could baton with it, but I like to use my thicker one, the Gerber one more, just for the fact that it's so much thicker and I know it can take the abuse better than this can. This one I've had for a little over a year or so. I have my Baco Laplander saw. This thing is amazing, um, especially for the price point. If you can't afford a silky saw, this is the next best thing to get. And I think I got one thing. I think this is 100 feet. I think this is 50 feet of two things of paracord. I have a lot of paracord and rope and stuff because I am a rope nut and I hate running out of it. So this one's just kind of like my random pouch up here. I have a char cloth tin which I won't take this camping, it's just somewhere I've been storing it. I have a flashlight. It's a three mode. I believe that one, that one's by Kutek. You can get like five of them for a couple bucks. Uh, a thing of waterproof matches, stormproof matches, I actually believe. Yep, stormproof matches and an extra striker in there. So that will get taken care of. Um, a thing of medical tape for anything from repairs to using as a bandage, as well as my medical kit. I guess that's actually sports tape, I should say. And then just standard Bic lighter for fire starting if I don't feel like using my fire steel or if it's just uh, too daunting to use it or the conditions don't allow it. I have that three ways to make a fire. I have a bug net which for the obvious can be used as a bug net but can also be used as a small net um, for transporting. Like something I would use this for would be fatwood because everyone knows how fatwood super sticky when you grab it. At least if you grab it in the wrong spot. So I'm going to use this mainly for that. Just throw the pieces I cut in here, take it back, process it, keep them in here. And it, it was a dollar that I got for Christmas. So it actually came in handy. And if I'm not mistaken, the rest of the stuff in here, I think a reflective paracord and orange and green reflective paracord. And I'm not going to bring them but I also have black, red, and blue reflective paracord. So I, I know I have plenty of paracord in here. And this, uh, where did it go? This cheapo orange stuff here will be what I'd use for a ridge line for my tarp if I don't bring the big roll of rope. So that is everything that I would bring out camping. Um, I, I guess I should say everything I bring out camping. That is the most I would bring out camping. I will definitely slim down on this stuff because I have a lot of redundancies like um, this bowl for instance that came with the stove. I don't need this bowl if I'm bringing my other camping plate or hillbilly skillet or my camp pot. There's just no room and it'll make this thing pack down flatter. And if I'm bringing the camp pot, I don't really need the bowl or vice versa. Granted, boiling water in that thing there, the little skillet, would be a lot more difficult than this. But it can be done. I can always make a plate out there with a piece of wood. So 
I'm not too worried about it. I've eaten food straight off the dirt. So, I'm not really too worried about what I'm eating off of. Unless it's dung, then I'm not too fond of it. But, one more thing about the backpack. Down in this bottom pouch is a rain fly. Just drapes over the top of it if it starts to rain. I'm not going to pull it out because it's kind of a pain to pull out and put back, but... That is all of my camping gear. If you feel there's anything I missed, please comment, let me know, uh, tell me what you think. And next time I head out camping or out to the woods, I'll be sure to take the videos.